Good morning, folks. Today we've got earth wind, solar wind, a solar flare, a geomagnetic storm, and a look at a deep space starburst galaxy. Let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com. We're looking at the last 24 hours on our star, and apart from the coronal hole, there is some activity incoming on the north worth viewing a bit more closely. But before that, let's stick to our own planet. Here's what a calm magnetosphere looks like, and this is what it looked like when I woke up this morning. Clearly, something was giving a solid whack to Earth's magnetic shield, and indeed, it was the coronal hole stream we've been expecting. I've got the relevant hours on both Discover and ACE's solar wind charts here. The middle panel, orange with a density shock wave, followed below that, purple on the left, yellow on the right, with a surge in plasma speed. That's the impact. We are currently in a low-level geomagnetic storm that is likely to persist or reverberate for at least a day. We'll be eyeing magnetic disruptions and electrical difficulties due to that event, especially in the communication, information, transportation, and power supply sectors. Up next peaking at an Earth-sized sunspot incoming on the south so that when we step back, we see the might of the northern incoming group. Titanic spots, but which have little action in the middle of them and have gone silent while facing Earth except for one mid-level C-class flare that we will analyze because someone should write a paper on the matter transfer and reconnection with the small event. The surging bit of plasma you're watching repeat is the delivery of that plasma from the front of the active region to the rear, and the delivery point back there is where the flare takes place. Again, nothing major here, and in general, the spots are going silent in the Earth-facing position. Just nice to get a close-in look. Up next, we've got ESO zoom function on full power coming into what they identify as a lensed galaxy shown twice via a nearby mass. But more importantly, it's a star-forming region on the cosmic highway. They found not a random inflow and distribution, but confined and structured pathways of material feeding that star-bursting area. Up next, NASA took the wind map features that have become so popular online and built a video integrating surface level winds and upper level winds. Now I've sped this up enough here that you might not see much, but if you go check it out yourself you should be able to see just how the upper level patterns affect where the low pressure cells near the surface are going to be and go, and combine those account for temperature and precipitation, which is of course weather. A quick note. The Thunderbolts were kind enough to let me clip some scenes from my talk 10 days ago in Phoenix and post it as the latest episode of Deeper Look over at SuspiciousObservers.org. Their entire conference will be coming out September 7th, so be on the lookout for that announcement early next month. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.